morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Luke's on this beautiful, beautiful summer day. Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us chant Psalm 33 as printed in your worship bulletin. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From 
From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all his strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death, and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in Him. For in His holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have put our trust in you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old. And Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born. As many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises. But from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord.
to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid of what, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfading treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. The owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. don't want y'all to miss a word of what I have to say. <laughs> Lord said, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. What is your reaction to hearing the words, Do not be afraid? Do you automatically wonder what it is you need to be on the alert for? Guilty. My control issues go into overdrive. The difference here, however, is that it is God and Jesus who speaks the words, our creator and redeemer who loves us more than anyone or anything. When it is God speaking to me and I hear these words, I stop and take a moment and then say, okay, Lord, I want to do your will Help me to let go of the reins and to follow you. In the Old Testament, Abram, who t trusted in the Lord, was not afraid to have an honest conversation with him. He also showed the same constraints from which we suffer today. We think only in human terms because, of course, well, we are humans. God isn't. His ways are higher than our ways. His will for us is far beyond our imaginations. We are asked to trust. So Abram and Sarah, who are in their senior of senior years, produce offspring to fulfill God's promise that Abram would have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the grains of sand on the seashore. Trust God. In the gospel lesson, Jesus asks us to trust God who simply asks us to follow him, to live as Jesus showed his disciples how to, how to live life by loving ourselves and loving our neighbors. Living life this way will be a sneak peek of the kingdom God desires to give to us. How do we do this? 
Well, to begin with, it's not an exercise program or a physical fitness routine in which we have goals to obtain. Nor is it like our New Year's resolutions, which last hours, days, maybe weeks. No, this is a way of living from the heart. The metaphorical purse mentioned in the gospel that does not wear out and which carries our treasures. Living from the heart is a commitment made in faith to follow in Jesus' footsteps. It is a way of saying, God, I love you, and I desire to live my life as Jesus did, and to reflect to others the love that you have shared with me, so that they too may know you and your love. It is choosing to live a different way of life, one that is modeled after Jesus. That scares some people because they believe that that means no laughter, no fun and games, just seriousness, straight face, that's it. Far from it. Jesus laughed. He sat down with sinners and had a good time sharing a meal and sharing conversation, including laughter, as well as letting them know how much God loves them and wants the best for them. We can all celebrate that. In the letter to the Hebrews, the author tells us, don't give up. Have faith. Trust. Jesus Christ is the one in whom we can hope and trust. We can place our faith in him because he is faithful. Faith. The assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Our faith is in Jesus, not in what we can accomplish or do, but that Jesus will be with us as we live our lives walking in his way. That we will have willing hearts open to the future God desires for us, which is far better than anything we can ask for or imagine. It's Jesus' faith that is key here. As we have faith in Jesus, that he is present with us and that we are walking the path he laid out, then through this faith, we can do things we couldn't do otherwise. Trust in Jesus. Our future is much brighter with Jesus than without. And Jesus works through us, the church, to practice and live out our faith. This faith that relies on the promises of God and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ can reconcile marriages, rebuild broken relationships, and break the bonds of addictions. Faith is demonstrated when we step forward to help children others have left behind. When we are emboldened to ask for forgiveness for the wrongs we have committed, but for which our pride keeps us from admitting. With our mustard seed sized faith, we can have the courage to be open to seek and acknowledge that God alone can lead us to hope and joy and strength and peace in a future that we cannot yet see, but of which we can be assured and confident. Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer to pray that God's kingdom be found here on earth as it is in heaven. God's kingdom is at hand. It is coming. It's near. God is asking us to be his hands and feet here in this part of his kingdom to minister to the poor, the oppressed, the widowed, and the prisoner outside the walls of this church. It only takes faith the size of a mustard seed to make a difference in those in need. Many of you have heard this story, but allow me to repeat it for those who may not have heard it. It is a story of an old man walking along a seashore. And he would stop, bend over, and throw something back into the ocean. He walked on, repeating this over and over and over. A young man who was falling behind him caught up to him and asked what he was doing. 
The older man replied that he was throwing the starfish that had been washed ashore during high tide back into the ocean. The young man asked why. Because they will die if they stay out of the water. The young man pressed on that there were hundreds, maybe thousands all along the seashore. You can't make a difference with that size of a problem. The old man bent over, threw another starfish back into the ocean and replied, No, but to that starfish I did make a difference. Never underestimate the difference you make to someone with some small act of kindness, which is an example of loving your neighbor. Who do you know that is lonely or recently widowed or is sick and can't take care of household chores? Let us all look closer at those around our homes and businesses and places we travel and see where God is calling us to act. Our prayer list here at St. Luke's is an excellent place to start and grow from there. Have an honest conversation with God and then trust God when you hear the words, Do not be afraid. I am your shield. Step out in faith to where God is calling you. Truly, you can make a difference. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. On page 392 of the prayer book, let us pray for the church and the world. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Paulson, our bishop, 
Daniel, Bishop of Uruguay, Tammy, our priest, and Bobby, our deacon, Beverly and Robert, our Iona candidates, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Oklahoma. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. John's, Tulsa, St. Simeon's home, Tulsa, and all bishops and other ministers. For all the ministers of God and God's church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For those serving our country at home or abroad, McKinley Noel, John Beauchamp. We also pray for our veterans, especially for those still struggling with wartime wounds. Let them feel your comfort and healing grace. For those who are in hospitals, for those who need healing, Mary Criswell, Joyce DeBauer, Mike Basir, Maya Walker, Mel Beauchamp, Diane West, Patty Buchanan, Melissa Morgan, River Northcutt, Marie Monton, Randy White, Doug Boucher, Garrett Morgan, Kyler Brown, Bill Yerby, Terry Morgan, Kate Wolf, Ashley, Bruce James, Rob Rogers, Drew Shepard, Jason King, Jeff Petska, Jody Staff, Michael Piercy, Drew Epperly, Lisa Ainsworth. Also, we pray for all impacted by the COVID virus and all other forms of disease or conditions which may cause suffering or death. Remembering all impacted by war around the globe, especially Ukraine, let us pray for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace, as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Mark, Ryan, Molly, and Izzy Vines, Thelys Walden, Joy White, and the healing ministry of St. Luke's. For those celebrating birthdays this week, Dan Church, Tom Crabtree, and Bill Peterson. For those celebrating anniversaries, Chris and Dana Kenny, Mike and Joy Miller, and Paige and Cherie Thompson. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. The altar flowers are given by Dan and Marcia Church in memory of Ever Ever Evelyn Lowry, Jane Church, Bill Lowry, Peggy Church, and Fred Simons. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Oh, welcome to St. Luke's this beautiful morning. It is a delight to see all your faces. It's a delight to hear the children in the background uh, being with us as the nursery is closed today because we have COVID in the workers' family. Uh, so hopefully in a couple of weeks we'll be back open. Uh, not that I want them to go back down there. I love having them with us. Um, lots going on. So most importantly, next week is our annual um, picnic, church picnic at Sheep Creek, and where we will have Eucharist at 11 o'clock uh, out there on the grounds. And so I hope you'll come and join us. Um, right now, there's not a, anything scheduled for the 9 o'clock, although we may open the door for those who'd like to come and do morning prayer that, that morning. I will send out an email about that. Uh, so bring your... There's still a sign-up sheet out there. I think there's one out there. There may be one on the bulletin board, too, uh, to say what you're going to bring. And if you're watching virtually, you can call, send us an email, let us know what you're bringing uh, for that event. I know the vestry is, is uh, bringing the, the meat, I believe. Is that right? Anybody? Uh, yeah. So we just need all the side dishes and all the fun stuff. Bring your swimsuits and uh, games, anything that you want to bring to have fun, and we'll hope that it'll be a, a gorgeous day for that event. Um, we'll also be sending the directions out again, just so make sure you have it, and also kind of the rules of the grounds so that you know what the, the boundaries are and the parameters of our fun time together. Anything else about Sheep Creek that anybody wants to say? Hope to see you all out there. Bring your lawn chairs. Uh, all that fun stuff. All right. Howdy Day is coming up also, day after Sheep Creek, and we're still in need of uh, donations for things to put in the packet for all of the new students coming on board. And so if you have a few things you'd like to, to donate that we can put in their bags, uh, please drop them by the office this week and next week. Uh, well, actually, this week. Sunday school is going to kick off pretty soon, and so be mindful that we'll be doing our ice cream Sunday social on the 11th of September, and bring your toppings. Ice cream will be provided, so make sure you bring your kiddos, uh, anybody that's part of any part of the formation, adults too, to celebrate the new fall formation year, so please come for that. Anything else that I need to... Do, do notice that we will be having a training day for acolytes, uh, chalicifers, and lay readers on the 18th after Sunday school. So if you're interested in those things, please come. Uh, bring your kiddos, whether they've already been trained or not. Uh, all the acolytes bring for a refresher and for training. Anything else or any other announcements you'd like to make? Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Angus, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I just saw a hand there. No, it's you. Okay, that sounds good. If you want to donate to Tabitha's house, they're still in need of school supplies, things like that. So thank you for that reminder. Michael? Um, education for ministry. Yeah, I did. Now is not the time for the, 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 the elevator speech, what it is, what it isn't. Um, the important thing is we are going to be uh, resuming our study uh, for another year, starting shortly after uh, formation begins around here, so a little bit after Labor Day, which means it's coming up quick. 
And now is the time to start firming up our roles, making sure we know who to who I know, who to enroll, because it is my, my pleasure to serve as your as the mentor of this group for another year. So if you have any questions or interest about education for ministry, please hunt me down after the service. Or anyone who has taken education for ministry to um, pick our brains and ask any questions. Uh, next Sunday, I'm planning on hanging around, um, kind of post, kind of having an informal Q and A about education for ministry right after the service. So at Sheep Creek. Pardon? At Sheep Creek. Sheep Creek. Uh, no, so maybe week after that. So <laughs> let's not uh, mix and match. But you can hunt me down. Sheep Creek. So, there you go. Education for ministry. If you have any questions, please find me or anyone else. And you can roll. Awesome. There's still room. Thank you. If you have taken EFM, raise your hands. So, there are your others that you can uh, tap into for resources. EFM is a very um, it's an amazing program that they have for laity. It is a long commitment, but it's so worth it, as I'm sure these people will tell you, those who have, who have done it, short, either for a little time or a long time. Uh, so I, I commend that to you. Also starting up are the Ignatian exercises. And if you're interested in doing a more contemplative journey, uh, Ignatian exercises may be for you, and come and see me about that, uh, where you are going to be basically on a journey with Ignatian between you and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit uh, and the scripture on a daily basis, really. And we meet as a group regularly too. So very moving. And if anybody has done that, if you'll raise your hand. And these two guys would love to share with you their experience. I know they would, if you'd like to hear a little more about their experience. Also, please mark your dates for the 29th of September. We will be having a service uh, celebration of new ministry for, as the bishop will be coming for uh, celebrating uh, me as now your rector. So I'm excited about that. So uh, I hope you'll put that on your calendar. It is a Thursday night, but uh, please come if you're able. Love to pack the house if we can. Anything else? See, lots happening. Lots of good stuff going on. Uh, really excited. And I feel like I'm always missing something when I'm doing that. But just keep your eyes open on all the events that are coming up. And uh, as you see the upcoming events on this page, it'll have all kinds of things for you to pay attention to. If you're interested in singing in the choir, uh, please let uh, Carson know, or you can even let Miriam know. So that way we can get your name uh, put in to the group. Uh, so even if you're just interested a little bit, that's all we need. Come and talk to us. Anything else? We'll be bring, doing communion down here again, probably for a few weeks uh, until things kind of calm down out there, be safe. Um, but walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Eucharistic Prayer A begins on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and beat on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ, Lord. Amen. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. I want all teachers, educators, people who work with them, students, come forward, please. Are we sure this is all the teachers? Professors. Come on, I know you're hiding back there. Come on up. Brandon? Yes. (laughs) Who else shall I call out? (laughs) Come on up. I want to see your backpack, Gus. Come show your backpack. Come on. That is awesome. You will. Oh, we got another backpack too. Oh, and another one. Come on up here. Those are backpacks. Y'all can stand right here with me if you would. You want to come up here or not? 
Yeah, it's okay. You know, this is uh, always an amazing time of year, and I know that our teachers and educators and those in the systems are working really hard right now getting ready for class. Uh, I've never worked in that setting. I've, I'm an educator myself, but not in that type of setting, so I can only imagine. But I can also imagine the joy of that first day and the joy of the children and the students that show up at universities and the high schoolers and uh, we have a senior this year. You're not a senior. So we have two seniors. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're growing up, people. Uh, so we are so excited for you and the hard work uh, and, the, and the environment that you're in, too. And so as we think about that, let us have, a, have prayer. The Lord be with you. O oh, eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, especially those here in Ada, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. Grant that these here that are among us and who are not with us today that teach, and those who learn, may find you to be the source of all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And holy God, bless these backpacks, these beautiful backpacks, yes, and the children who carry them, that they may know the learning that is coming will fill them with love and joy and sustain them all through their life. It may not feel like it, but it will. And the blessing of this backpack, beautiful. And you also, and you also. Amen. Oh, and you too, is bossy. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah. And please stay for reception. We have some um, celebratory, delicious stuff back there. So come on back there and say thank you to these folks and good luck to the students.